So let's take a look at part three of your activity, writing in scientific notation, okay? And you can see all these numbers are non-scientific. These are whole numbers, basically. Whether the number is small or the number is large, you're gonna write it in the power of 10, okay? Whenever a number is less than one, you're gonna have an exponent of 10 to the minus some value, okay? Because you're gonna be moving the decimal point from right, from left to right. So whenever you move the de decimal point from left to right, you're going to get a more negative value because that number, when it's translated to an exponential notation, notation won't have zeros in front of it, okay? When a number is bigger than one, like this, then it's going to have a positive exponent. So just keep that in mind. When, when you see a number and it's less than one, you better have a negative exponent when you convert it to, to scientific notation. When a number is bigger than one, it better be a positive exponent. So why do we use uh, scientific notation or exponential notation? Consider a penny. Okay, which is what you guys are going to be using in like uh, your penny experiment. And the question is how many copper atoms are in a single penny? Well, we can't give you the exact amount, but we can give you an approximation based on the fact that we know the mass of each carbon atom and we know the mass of a penny. So based on that, we can say that there are 29,500 followed by 20 zeros. Now you can't even fit that in your calculator. It's too big of a number, but yet we need to put that number say in a calculation. Well, the two, nine and five are the only numbers that contain information. The zeros are just placeholder that tells you the size of the number. So why don't we just find a convenient form so that we know how many zeros there are and we keep the two, nine and five, which are significant. And that's what exponential notation is about. We can take this huge number right here and express it like that. And it still gives you the same meaning. Okay, it still gives you the same meaning. Now, suppose we have an, a question like, um, what is the mass of a single co uh, copper atom? Well, that number is this right here, okay? <laughs> Uh, it's a very, very small number. And again, the zeros here are nothing more than placeholders. The numbers that are significant is at the end. So why not express that number in some sort of notation? So you still have that information, but you don't have to carry this excess luggage. And that, again, is why we use exponential notation. Okay, and you can see that this number is much, much less than one. So it's gonna have a huge negative exponent. Okay, so how, what, what exactly is exponential notation? Well, you know that we use base 10 as our numbering scheme, okay? Uh, once we finish 10, then we say that, okay, there's 10, and then we start at one, two, three, four, five, six again, and that would be 11, 12, 13. And once we finish the second base, then that's 20, and then we start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 again. And after we complete our third set, then that's 30. So that's what we mean by base 10. So why don't we just start in order to get an idea of the magnitude, just multiply a number by 10, and then we can get an idea of the size. So if we have this right here, one equals one times 10 to the zero. 10 to the zero, by the way, is equal to one, okay? 10 to the zeroth power is just one. Please remember that. So if we take one and multiply it by 10 to the zero, then that's just one, okay? If we take one and multiply it by 10, then that's 10. So why don't we just express 10 as 1.0 times 10 to the first, okay? Because what we're doing is we're multiplying one by 10, one times 10 is 10. Well, one times 10 times 10, 10 times 10 is 100. So 10 times 10 is 10 to the second. And what we get is, this value 100. 
So you can see where the exponent comes in. It's just multiplying 10 by itself a number of times to get you that size, to get you that size. Now, here we can see that we are, are actually multiplying 100,000 10 five times. Now, what happens if the number is not 10? What happens if it's uh, a value like um, something like 224, 22,400? Well, we take, we strip the numbers that are significant, like 224, and then the zero zeros can be replaced by the exponent. Zero zeros, nothing more than um, 100, okay? So if you take 224 multiplied by 100, okay, multiplied by 100, then we get this right here. Two point two four times ten to the second, but and that's exponential notation. But if you move the decimal point all the way to the leftmost digit, so that the decimal point is right here, then that is not only exponential notation. More specifically, that's scientific notation. Scientific notation is an exponential notation, but it's specific in which we move the decimal point just to the right of your leftmost digit. So this number is scientific notation, okay? But a number like this, 45 times 10 to the minus three is exponential notation. A number like this, 4.5 times 10 to the minus two, is scientific notation and exponential notation. That's the difference, okay? Now, I think I jumped ahead, but what happens when the number is less than one? We don't multiply it by 10, but we multiply it by one over 10. So a number like 0.1 is one times one over 10, okay? And that's where we get the exponent. A number like 0.01 is one, times one over 10, times one over 10, twice, twice. And that's why we get the negative two exponent. A number like this right here, we're actually multiplying one over 10 six times. So again, it's either 10 or one over 10 in order to get you the size. The number that is significant is what you keep, okay? So hopefully that, that makes sense in terms of, um, how to take a number and express it in scientific or exponential notation. Okay, so we can go back to our, our activity here and we can work on these because we can see that this is nothing more than five times 10 to the zero because remember 10 to the zero is one. So if we wanna put this in a scientific notation scheme, then we need to put times 10 to the something. If we want to keep five as is, then it needs to be multiplied by 10 to the zero, okay? And that would be the correct way of doing this right here. A number like this, you have to count the way, the number of times you're moving the decimal. And again, you always want to move it just to the right of your non-zero number. Your non-zero number here is one. So you're gonna write it as 1.02, and then you're gonna count how many places you moved it over to the right, and that'll be your exponent. So I hope that's clear in terms of some of the reviews uh, as far as uh, writing things in scientific notation. Remember that scientific notation is just a specific category under exponential notation. Exponential notation is expressing a number in factors of 10. Scientific notation is expressing numbers in uh, factors of 10, but always moving that decimal point just to the right of your leftmost non-zero number, okay? And if you remember that, then you should have no problems uh, in the rest of this exercise.